Topping the news at 7, four new cases of COVID-19 confirmed. One of them is Barbuda's first case. Police report significant reduction in reported crimes in 2020 compared with a year earlier. Major developments continue at the Antigua Port Authority. I'm Sherilyn Beza. Stay tuned for the details. And the government extends Christmas Barrel Initiative to the end of February. The details right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS, the region's news leader. My name is Garfield Burford. And I'm Terry Andrew. Thank you so much for joining us on a Friday evening. You know, first story, Antigua and Barbuda has recorded four new cases of COVID-19, taking laboratory confirmed cases since the start of the pandemic to 167. Active cases have, however, moved up by three since one more individual has recovered. So the active cases now at 12. The information is contained in the latest dashboard from the Health Ministry with the information up to 6 p.m. on Wednesday of this week. The ministry says one of the positive results came from among a batch of 116 samples tested at Mount St. John's Medical Center. Meanwhile, four of the 19 samples tested at the Caribbean Public Health Agency were positive one of them being a repeat test on someone who already has the virus. Three of the new cases are imported, taking that figure to 99, while the other is non-imported for a total of 68. Now, deaths remain at five, while results are being awaited from 36 samples being tested at Mount St. John's Medical Center. Also here for us, meanwhile, one of the new cases represents Barbuda's first since the start of the pandemic. The case is imported with the individual arriving in Antigua from the United States on the 4th of January and was tested on arrival. They later traveled to the Sister Isle on Tuesday, the 5th of January, prior to the test results being received Thursday. The visitor is presently in isolation. Health authorities, including the Barbuda Council's medical team, have commenced the necessary contact tracing. This developing story now a major one because a COVID-19 vaccine advisory committee has been formed in this country. This comes as the World Health Organization, the WHO, calls for equitable access to vaccines. ABS's Jessica Russell joins us with the very latest. Good evening, Jessica. What more can you tell us about this committee? Good evening. The Health Ministry launched the COVID-19 National Technical Working Group, or NTWG, earlier this week. This body will ultimately advise the Ministry on which vaccine should be used here in Antigua and Barbuda. This comes as the World Health Organization's COVAX facility through the Pan American Health Organization asks the member states to create groups like these. WHO Director General Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus says data is vital to the rollout of vaccines. Some companies and countries have not submitted critical data, which we need to issue emergency use listings, which blocks the whole system of procurement and delivery. He says COVAX has been working to secure billions of doses. COVAX, set up by Gavi, CEPI and WHO in April last year, has now secured contracts of two billion doses of safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines which we're ready to roll out as soon as the vaccines are delivered. And we also have the right of first refusal on an additional one billion dollars. The COVAX facility was created to ensure there's equitable access to a COVID vaccine. But Dr. Gabriela says poorer countries have been excluded from the supply chain. 42 countries are rolling out safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines. 36 of these are high-income countries, and six are middle-income countries. So there is a clear problem that low and most middle-income countries are not receiving the vaccine yet. He says high- and middle-income countries that are already a part of COVAX are also seeking to make additional deals to get vaccines. I urge countries that have contracted more vaccines than they will need and are controlling the global supply to also donate and release them to COVAX immediately, which is ready today to roll out, to roll out them uh, out quickly. And I urge countries and manufacturers to stop 
making bilateral deals at the expense of COVAX. He says ending the pandemic is one of humanity's great races, and we will win or lose this race together. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Thanks, Jessica. Now, the committee is chaired by consultant pathologist and head of the Mount St. John's Medical Center Laboratory, Dr. Lester Simon, and Dr. Courtney Lewis is the deputy chairman. Other members include Chief Medical Officer Dr. Rhonda Seely Thomas, Dr. Jason Belizer, Dr. George Mansour, Dr. Siobhan Bell Jarvis, Dr. Linroy Christian, Diane Lala Rodriguez, Margaret Smith, and Alfred Attil. There will also be representation from the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Social Transformation, Ministry of Legal Affairs, Antigua and Barbuda Medical Association, Antigua and Barbuda Nurses Association, Antigua and Barbuda Pharmaceutical Association or Society, and the media as well. Meanwhile, we learn here today that the Health Ministry has rebuked the online publication which calls itself Antigua Breaking News over one of its recent articles. It published uh, an article on the, the 5th of January with the headline, Antigua Records Sixth Death from COVID-19. Now, the ministry used the release today to indicate that officials at the Mount St. John's Medical Center have categorically refuted the claims. The officials are quoted as saying they will handle any such developments with a high level of transparency, as they have done in the past. Though the article has since been removed, the ministry notes it was shared on multiple social media platforms. The ministry has chastised the publication, calling its action irresponsible, malicious, and deplorable. Portfolio Minister Samalwin Joseph is quoted as saying, It is difficult enough already to manage this pandemic in a way to prevent deaths and harm to the people of Antigua and Barbuda, and considers it abhorrent for anyone to imagine death on the public when it does not exist. Other news now, the police have reported an approximately 16% reduction in crimes reported in 2020 compared to 2019. The top brass of the force released the figures during a media conference to examine crime and the response to it last year. Our reporter Jamie J. Roche was there. The police investigated some 2,370 reports of crime in 2020, a decrease of about 16% compared to 2,836 from 2019. Over the two years, the police received the fewest reports, 132, in April 2020, when the country was on a COVID-19 lockdown. A breakdown shows decreases in several crimes, including breaking and larceny, larceny, predial larceny, wounding, aggravated robbery, shooting, and malicious damage. There were also fewer reports of rape and unlawful sexual intercourse in 2020. On the other hand, the force saw increased breaking, attempted breaking, robbery, and burglary reports in 2020. Murders are up from three to nine. For the murders, six of the nine murders for 2020 have been solved. Arrests were made in these cases. The police also investigated missing reports for 13 people and nine vehicles last year. There were 1,311 arrests, 242 sudden deaths, 908 spent convictions, and one deportee. Meanwhile, the fire department recorded an increase in fire calls, but there were fewer house fires in 2020 compared to the previous year. Traffic collisions decreased by 350, and the four road deaths in 2020 were one more than in 2019. Jimmy J. Roche, ABS News. Thanks, Jimmy. Meanwhile, Police Commissioner Atlee Rodney says investigators are still working to crack the three unsolved murder cases from 2020. Now, there's been a lot of public attention surrounding the death of Customs Officer Nigel Christian. Christian was gunned down on a dirt road in New Winthrop's after being abducted from his home July 2020. Commissioner Rodney says the circumstances make it a difficult case. We do not have real evidence in terms of somebody saying, I saw or I heard. So we have to depend on a lot of circumstantial evidence, and we'll continue to pursue that. Now, the police commissioner reiterated he's pleased with the work of his investigators. While certain matters cannot be shared with the public, the police chief says the police have shared information with external partners. In this case, we had to do, and we are doing a lot of work with the FBI. They are analyzing certain things for us. They are speaking to us, and we are speaking to them. And Whatever they ask us, additional things to provide, we are making that available to them. Now, the other two unsolved murder, in, uh, murder cases involve the shootings of Troy Baptiste and Dave Anthony. Baptiste's lifeless body was found on a dirt on a road in Bendel's January 2020, and Anthony was shot to death in his home March last year. So those three cases are still active. They are still troubling us because we were hoping that with nine cases we could come here and say we have solved all nine 
I mean, a developing story, 48 hours after being nabbed by the police and charged for serious crimes, Carlson Matthew Jr. of Upper Fort Road has escaped police custody. Police confirmed that he escaped from a holding cell at St. John's Police Station, allegedly, while a police officer was attending to another detainee around 5 this afternoon. He was last seen wearing a pair of red capri pants and a multicolored shirt. He had, been held, he had been nabbed on Wednesday morning in the Point area after a wanted bulletin was issued for his arrest. Matthew Jr. was later charged with housebreaking and larceny, which, is, uh, which he allegedly committed on the 30th of December. If you have seen him or know where he is, please contact the nearest police station or the Criminal Investigations Department. Police are also demanding he turn himself in immediately at any police station. Much more of the stories that we're tracking for you nationally as well to come right after the break. You're watching ABS, the evening news on the region's news leader. Still to come. A major update on the port, port redevelopment Darwin project. The You'll hear from Sherilyn Beezer on that story and as well. Dates announced for further consultation meetings with the residents as the Booby Alley housing renewal project continues. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Stay with us. At Najiko. The things that matter to you, matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Meet Crutches. Crutches painted his house with Sherwin Williams paints. Unlike his neighbors, Crutches saves money by not having to repaint his house every year, which gives him more time for things like vacation. In fact, here he is now laid up on a beach in Honolulu with two hugs. Whoops, family. I, I meant family. While his neighbors are painting with who knows what. See what over 150 years of innovation can do for you. Bring your home to life with the very best paints, only at Sherwin-Williams. It's not easy getting rid of these types of greases every day. It's hard work, but if you really think about it, it's not really us doing the cleaning. At Total Import Supplies, we believe it's all about the product. Our extensive new line of ChemClean products are extremely concentrated, eco-friendly, effective, and guaranteed to make your life a whole lot easier. Whether you're cleaning at home, the office, or at industrial-type spaces, when it comes to food-based solvents, sanitizers, cleaners, floor care, commercial machines, and dispensers for laundry care, let the product do most of the work for you. Introducing the best brands in the cleaning business from ChemClean Limited. Available only from Total Import Supplies. We welcome you back with an update now on the redevelopment of the Deepwater Harbor, the largest public sector infrastructure project in the country's history. The construction of a commercial pier is progressing steadily and will allow Antigua to accommodate larger uh, cargo vessels. It is part of the vision of making this country a major transshipment port in the Eastern Caribbean. Now, as we hear from our reporter, Sherilyn Beezer, this project is benefiting from the dredging work to accommodate larger cruise vessels on the tourism side. The construction of the commercial pier will be extended out by three meters and will now take up what was previously the lower and higher dock area. We are extending seven meters from the old pier, the, the face of the pier, and we are also judging this deeper. This is going down to 8 to 11.8 .8 meters so that it will accommodate the Oasis, Oasis class ship to go up to Navy's pier. Port manager Darwin Telemach explains the tie backs to be placed in this area will be significant in providing additional strength. So that when large vessels come in and they are moored and attached to the bollards, that there's something in addition to all the strength that's going to be here further back assisting in keeping it in place. With one linear berth to be constructed along the entire port, Telemach says the plan is to ensure operations continue during the construction. The jetty on the eastern side will be built first. When that section is concluded, we will move all ships that are coming into Antigua here. So the crane, everything is going to come over here. 
and we will move the construction further west. The new berth upon completion should provide 500 meters of berthing space. I'm Cheryl Indies reporting for ABS News. Thanks, Cheryl. And meanwhile, Port Manager Darwin Telemac says 2020 was challenging, with the authorities struggling throughout the entire year amid the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. He says January and February underperformed, while March outperformed every March in the last five years. So it was really a strong performance. But there's a reason for that. The government had been preempting business that there was probably going to come a lockdown, and um, they gave them enough time to bring a bulk of goods in, and uh, I think that saw March jump through the roof. Telemax says April was extraordinarily tough at the height of the lockdown measures to contain the pandemic. May did the same. June, July was really, really bad. And uh, in the last two months, in November and December, we saw a, a renaissance moment, I should say, where we got a little bit of breather, but it was nowhere close to 2019 either. Uh, we were under in December, in, in December and November. And once the tabulation is done, he says cumulatively, the port will approximately be 27 to 28% behind 2019, he says this is significant and that many of the port's liabilities were challenged. He says he's however hopeful for an improvement in 2021 as the fallout from the pandemic begins to wane. Well, Cabinet has decided to extend the Christmas dollar barrel initiative until the end of February this year. According to Cabinet notes, more than 10,000 barrels were imported by residents across this country during the program. The special waiver program covers barrels containing clothing, foodstuff, and sanitizing materials. Those importing a barrel or e-container will pay an EC $10 handling fee and a 10% revenue recovery charge, or RRC, on the cost of the items. That was the book. Indeed, as the Booby Alley project continues to unfold, dates have been set for town hall meetings with residents. January 14 will be for residents with last names A, to I, January 15 for people with the last names J to Q, and finally, January 16 will be for surnames R through to Z. Now, all meetings will begin at 7 in the evening at the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party branch office on Lower North Street. Parliamentary representative for the area and Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown, along with the Relocation Committee, will engage with attendees on their concerns. The project is an initiative to provide Better housing to over 100 families in Booby Alley. It's funded by an EC $100 million grant from the People's Republic of China. And work continues on the Boggy Peak Interpretation Center in Christian Valley, with completion expected within three months. Project coordinator Aideen Greenaway says the project set to be completed by the end of March will foster biodiversity, conservation, and ecosystem balance in this country. The Department of the Environment is excited about this because, you know, we preach a lot about protecting our environment. Mm. And this project really is going to provide another way, another avenue, um, adding to our tourism product. The centre will serve as uh, the welcome site of visitors uh, to the Boggy Beak Christian Valley areas and will feature a main exhibition hall, offices, restrooms, storage areas and benches outside for relaxation. Ground was broken in February last year, and just under a year, despite minor setbacks because of COVID-19, the project is nearing its revised completion schedule. The project forms part of the Environment Division Sustainable Pathways, Protected Areas and Renewable Energy, uh, with an estimated price tag of 1.5 million EC dollars. We'll, of course, be tracking that story and so many more, Terry, of course, following up to make sure that we keep you across all those developing stories. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to news across the region and farther afield. One of the stories in the region is this one, that COVID-19 cases ratchet up across several Caribbean territories. We'll hear from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados and others. In fact, we'll be taking a trek throughout the Eastern Caribbean and all the archipelago of the region. And internationally, U.S. House Speaker concerned that President Trump could start a military conflict in the dying days of his presidency. These stories are all ahead for us right here on the ABS Evening News. We'll be right back.